Welcome to a brief introduction of DNA microarrays presented by the Southwest Center for Microsystems Education. In this introduction, we discuss some of the applications of DNA microarrays and the different types of arrays that are being used today. To learn more, even more about DNA microarrays, be sure to check out our pres other presentations on the fabrication of DNA microarrays as well as the one on how a DNA microarray works. Today, DNA microarrays can be found in the medical field, forensics, agriculture, and toxicology, just to name a few. In the medical field, DNA microarrays are helping researchers learn more about diseases, what causes them, how to identify them, and how to treat them. Okay. We now know more about diseases such as diabetes, multiple sclerosis, heart disease, and cancer than we've ever known before. For some of these diseases, such as MS or multiple sclerosis, researchers have been able to identify specific diseases that influence the risk of getting the disease. Such discoveries may eventually lead to the development of therapeutics that can prevent a disease, control a disease, and possibly even cure it. These single nucleotide polymorphism chips, or SNPs, are a type of DNA microarray. These particular arrays are used to identify the bovine genome or the genes of a cow. By mapping the cow's genome, researchers can identify and monitor the genes that determine certain preferred traits, such as a cow's ability to resist disease, the characteristics of its meat, its ability to produce milk, and its ability to tolerate stress. So what exactly do DNA microarrays do? In short, they look at our genes. They can identify the presence or absence of a gene. For example, today's microarrays can test a person's genes to see if specific cancer genes are present, such as do they have the genes for breast cancer or the genes for prostate cancer. DNA microarrays can compare genes from two different sources, such as comparing the human genes against the genes of a mosquito or comparing the genes of two different people. They can also see how genes are affected by an external stimulus, such as UV light or ultraviolet light from the sun, or a specific chemical or a drug. Just in case you're wondering exactly what is a gene, let's talk briefly about the human genome. The human genome is a set of genetic information identified by specific DNA sequences. This graphic illustrates a DNA molecule and its base pairings. Remember that a base pair consists of two of four nucleotides. The four nucleotides being adene, or A, illustrated in green, thymine, or T, illustrated in red, quinine, or G, in yellow, and cytosine, in, or C, in blue. The genetic code consists of three-letter words called codons, which are each formed by a sequence of three nucleotides, such as A, C, C, or C, A, G. A specific gene is a unique combination of base pairs or a unique DNA sequence in a DNA strand. For example, a specific type of gene called a tumor suppressor gene, which is a gene that protects a cell from getting cancer, could have a DNA sequence of base pairs such as GCTATA. The Human Genome Project that was started back in 1990 found that the human genome consisted of 30,000 genes. However, of these 30,000 genes, we can also form mutations of these genes, which are caused by radiation, exposure, errors in the replication process, and many, many other factors. It is important to note that a person's genes are stored in every cell of the body. However, the activity of the genes vary from cell to cell. What I mean by activity is that a gene is said to be active when it can make a copy of itself. And how a gene makes a copy of itself is a completely different lesson. The thing to remember here is that some of our genes are not active while others are active and that activity can vary from cell to cell. Also, there are a variety of external stimuli that can actually turn a gene on or make it active. The activity of one's genes can determine whether or not we develop certain traits 
or whether or not we are susceptible to certain diseases. It is worth noting that individual human beings differ by about 0.1% genetically. Remember that there are about 30,000 genes in the human genome. So therefore, this means that between human beings, we only have about 30 genes that are different. These 30 genes are why we as humans are different, why we look different, and why we have different traits. Chimpanzees share about 98% of the same genes as humans. Therefore, the remaining 2% difference is what creates the many differences between humans and chimpanzees. Just for fun, let's look at a couple of other organisms. Um, the fruit fly. Humans share 30% of our genes with the fruit fly, and 15% of our genes are found in mustard grass. Now that we've had a very tiny review of genes, let's see how genes tie into the DNA microarray. DNA microarrays, as I mentioned before, help us to learn more about our genes. Some DNA microarrays are designed to identify specific genes. Such microarrays are referred to as direct detection microarrays. These arrays not only detect the presence or absence of specific genes, but they also detect the presence or absence of gene mutations. These types of arrays are used in the medical field. They're used for forensics, and they are also used for genotyping, which is the process of identifying differences in genetic makeup between two or more sources. It's important to note that even though a person may have a gene or a set of genes for a specific disease, that does not mean that they will actually get the disease. Such a gene must be active in order for it to do anything. And if the gene is inactive, or one might say it's dormant, then the disease does not exist. Also, researchers have found that most genetic diseases are influenced by many different genes gene mutations, and gene activity. So how do we identify gene activity? We use a gene expression microarray. Gene expression microarrays detect the expression levels in a sample, or in other words, which genes are active and which genes are not active in the sample that we're testing. Remember that a gene is said to be active when it can make a copy of itself. This happens during transcription when an mRNA copies to cDNA. This process is explained in more detail in the presentation on how a DNA microarray works. In gene expression arrays, one can see how genes are affected or changed due to some external stimuli, such as environmental factors, a drug, or a change in drug dosage. The arrays compare the before and after effects of the stimulus on one's genes. These arrays can also be used to compare the genes of cells that are affected by a disease versus those that are not affected by the disease. Gene expression microarrays detect how cells and organisms change and adapt to specific stimuli, how they change based on changes in the environment or one's disease state. This accumulation of information, or the results of a gene expression test, is called a gene expression profile. This graphic is a heat map of a gene expression array, and the different colors help to identify the presence or absence of genes, as well as the level of activity of genes. The DNA microarray has opened up a whole new frontier for exploration in the medical research, in drug development, in forensics, in toxicology, and in food production. All of the information derived from DNA microarrays affect us in one way or another. Through the use of DNA microarrays, we can identify the presence of specific genes, gene mutations, and pathogens. Today, we are getting closer and closer to knowing what makes us tick, what makes us sick, and what can make us well. For more information, you can download the DNA Microarray Learning Module from the SCME website, as well as view our other presentations on DNA Microarrays.